and Jacob Blue 17 and for today we're going to do our top 10 cartoon villains from the low when we hold to the evil and nasty and most of our childhood villains that we feared when we were children isn't that right honey yeah but this way such those villains I grew up with all became interested in exactly. during my childhood and during my time in high school so this will have villains from American cartoons in films like Disney and anime. True. Also, there will be villains who have many incarnations on this list. Double that. Later on, I might want to do a list of my own with Jake, of course. My own Halloween list, which I've already made years ago. So, I'll probably do that. Um, we'll probably do that one Sunday, if I have time. Plus, I usually do. Plus, living here, it's awesome. Oh, we just moved to a new house. It's very lovely and comfortable. You know, it is any case, mm. our first villain is Captain Plutonian. I mean, you know. Pollution. Thank you, honey. The villain was combined of nasty five villainous attributes. You may name them Jacob because I only know a little bit of this villain. No, then. Captain Pollution is basically the evil double ganger of Captain Planet. Yep. The evil villains created him by creating evil duplicates of the planet he rings. True. Duke Nukem got super radiation. Ugh. Blunder got deforestation. Yeah. One two rings that weren't used outside summoning pollution. Yeah. Slice Sludge got smog. Mm. Nothing like a bad case of gas. <sighs> Who farted? Verma Scum got hot. Yeah. And Dr. Light got hate. Yeah. Have some look hours much ease ring apart, but would influence negative emotion. When the powers combine, they bring out Captain Pollution. And who, along with his iconic appearance, also speaks like a surfer. Yeah, a very nasty surfer. When I first saw this villain, he creeped me out. But the only other villain that was on Captain Planet that scared me on my mind was Hitler himself. But then again, that was just from a cartoon, from an episode that was known to be very yeah. hit and miss. Yeah. But as for Captain Pollution, he gave me the creeps from growing. I mean, I'm on serious. He's like the evil version of Captain Planet. Like, he, it's like he's the evil double twin, the evil, evil Devo. He's like a nasty piece of garbage. Really nasty compared to the more garbage that yeah. I've seen in my life. Yuck. Mm. Yeah. Well, just as Captain Planet renews his energy when in contact with the elements of Earth, pollution means toxins like radiation and toxic waste to renew his strength. But it's mm. a case of what's good for one is bad for the other. That is true. That Captain is very good. That pollution is weakens planet. Captain Pollution is weakened by pure king things. And on the topic of that episode of Hitler, see how Captain Planet was weakened just by feeling the amount of hate Hitler had. That's true. Because that pollution That's true. weakened when he's surrounded by a great deal of love and other positive emotions. Now I have a curious question, Jacob. Who would win the battle against the villainy with Hitler versus Captain Pollution? Who would win the battle, love? I say pollution. Agreed. He'd be, fueled, he'd be fueled by Hitler's hate. Oh, yeah. Those two could be a troubling double of nastiness. They could be very, very evil. And believe me. Indeed. <laughs> However, pollution didn't stick around for long. He only appeared in a total of four episodes, both of which are two part episodes. I wish he would. Introduction can. episode. Mm. Where Captain Planet defeated him by dragging him for the elements of Earth, and in the two part pilot, the new adventures of Captain Planet. There is a possibility that since Captain Planet showed up in the KO, okay, time to fight, it's believed that he may return in that show, and maybe there'll be a battle between him and Captain Planet with KO and his group. Although that's only my type theory. Next villain is Dick Dastry, and unfortunately, I know nothing of Dick Dastry. Only Jaco does. So, Jaco, it's all yours, love. I think Dick Dastry, in my opinion, is the most popular villain produced by Hanna-Barbera. 
He made his debut in 1968 in the show Wacky Racing, where along with his canine psychic Mudley, constantly cheated in order to win the race. Mm. Even though Dassey is a better driver, his car, the mean machine, is the fastest car in the race. Instead of use, relying on those characteristics, he always it's in every episode. You should be backfiring in a wily coyote like way. Uh -huh. After the wacky races, he and Mudley received their own spin-off. That's why Mudley and their flying machines went along with the scaredy cat Zilly and Clunk, who usually makes wacky noises whenever he speaks, were given the task of hunting, of trying to catch the pigeon Yankee Doodle. That's why was a working boy by Paul Winchell, best known for playing Gargamel and being the original voice for Tiger in the Winnie the Pooh franchise. Right. In addition, that's me also well, look, here as the main antagonist in Yogi's treasure hunt during the 80s. Failing to get to the treasure of the episode of each episode for Yogi and his team. Then during the nine in the early night, he's in Mud who were once again shown as cheaters and defend the Panda 500. Basically, they fight the wacky races, except they're using monster trucks, and the duo are up against various other Hanna Barbera stars, such as Tomcat, Yogi, Joe McGraw, Pixie and Dixie, Ewan Sumwick, Wally Gator, Miguel Gorilla, Lego, Plus Huckleberry Hound. Basically, it's a who's who of Hanna Barbera stars. Isn't he cute? He knows all the facts. That's my hubby. Yeah. And. I mean, Yogi, you know, where he was voiced by Rob Paulson. He's depicted as a kid, often causing trouble for Yogi know, and his friends. Riding a bicycle based on his car, the Mean Machine. And that was our information on Dick, Dick, on Dick Dudley. You know what I mean. Try to say his name. Thank you, hon. Our next villain Every is... Every time... <laughs> I'm not done yet. Well, go on, honey. Usually when... Someone doesn't go right for that week. He usually goes, he usually goes, drag, drag, and double drag. And whenever he goes, only for help, he goes, Mudley, do something. He should be Mudley, laughs at Dastley's mishap. Like this. He's ultimate Dastley to bonk Mudley on the head or something along those lines. This is his laughing. Yes, I remember. Got right on the Exactly. That's what I did, honey. I know him. I know him very well. I like Mudley better than Dick Dastry. Dogs are more strong against men. Our next villain is Vilgatz, and I may take this one, honey, because I know this guy like a lot. Mm -mm. Vilgatz is, is an intergalactical alien warlord, conquest of the Sieg, the origins of the Omnitrix, which was built by a gray matter, or what they're called is gray intelligence, was created for our research and purposes, but unfortunately, Vilgax wanted it all to himself so he can rule the universe. But sadly, it was stopped by a little boy named Ben Ten, who ironically is 10 years old. In the end, he was the enemy of his grandfather, Max, in the past. Ironically, the apple does not fall from the uh, plumber's tree, if you know what I mean, honey. <laughs> yes. Vilgax wasn't very intimidating in his first appearance, mm -hmm. but his most iconic appearance is the one he gets at the end of the first season of the original show. True, true. Which also comes with his ability to expand his arm. Okay. Giving him a little extra strength. And currently he uses his tentacles for fire and Peran to keep his power controlled. He only uses it when, he's, when he wants to erate his enemies. And as Vex like is the master of strength, and then we'll think about a little bit of ways to get things that he wants, such as tricking his enemies if cycling force isn't enough. He's a very convincing liar and will do whatever it takes to get his doll, even teaming up with unlikely people such as Dr. Animal. Vega Vilgat seemed to learn a lot after his numeral battles with Ben, such as learn to ignore his quips and how to counter most of his alien rooters. Ben, even so far as he needed to rely on pure power for something Vilgat's never attacked before, such as Army enhancements to defeat him, which is all true. It took him so many yeah, times. Mm -hmm. I'm not really into the reboot. I kind of yeah. like the first one because I loved Ben 10 when I was yeah. a young high schooler. Actually, junior high is being more precise. But to this in day, fact, was, oh, in fact, Bill Gax became one of my favorite villains during my later years in high school. Uh. 
He's scared. Like, years be Although the thing is, I would like to compare him with another villain that scared me even worse than him. I'll give you a clue on who he is. He's an evil, nasty, diabolical, <laughs> and Ben's afraid of him as much as I am. You know who I'm talking about, right? Yes, you know. No, the, the clown, the clown guy. Zombozo. Bingo. I did not like him. He made me, he made me want to do things that were gross. And trust me, ugh, if I had to deal with one of these idiots, I would rather deal with Vilgax than Zombozo because I hate clouds. Yes. What are you doing? Well, that's from the topic here. Sorry, honey. Just doing some comparisons. I yeah, can't. I didn't do that. I, sorry, but well, that's this is intimidating cyborg appearance. Demon Blonde did an excellent job providing the voice for Vilgax. That is very true. That is very true. He did an excellent job at that. Very excellent indeed. In addition, Vilgax is also known for destroying five worlds, including Diamond and Tone Planet, yep. creating a black hole, and conquering yep. M World. Yep. And gaining the power of those world's champions. Ultimos of the Galactic Enforcers. Ironically, I found out he has a relative named Glax. It's an Omnitrix DNA sample of the Crimson Diaz Generos from Valexius. That's where his home planet is. Only first appeared in Army Trip. Oh, sorry about that, love. I'm reading information from the new one. I apologize. I gotta look for the not the reboot. Dang it. In any case, all I can say is this. Vilgax is one nasty villain, and I wouldn't want to deal with him in the Black Alley. No sure, no sure, Bob. Nah, -uh, nah, -uh. I do not would want to deal with that. Like Mag said, you do not want to pick a fight with Vilgax. <laughs> and also, at the end of Alien Force, it's also revealed that when he's submerged in water, Vilgax can transform into a giant octopus-like creature. That's true. If it's necessary, that form can pretty scare me on my sh living crack. Our next top villain is Cheetah. Cheetah is known to be one of, um, oh yes, one of women's first evilest villains. They're both women. They both want to fight, but they both work for different sides. Wonder Woman good. Cheetah evil. She always wants to work for the perfect way. She's kind of like Batwoman, only she's truly like a cat. In some editions, you, you said bad woman, not cat woman. Oh, sorry, 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 no, 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 sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, let me rephrase. She's like cat woman. They're both cat villain types, but yet Cheetah is a bit different. In some comics or some episodes and cartoons, she was mutated with Cheetah. She had Cheetah armor or Cheetah costume on. But the difference is for Justice League Ultimate, though, I kind of like her in that one because she looks more feral than human. What's your thoughts, love? Basically, the version of Cheetah I did, as you see on the list, is the Bomber and Minerva version. They say there have been three women who have taken on the persona of Cheetah. The original Cheetah, Priscilla Witch, was just a woman wearing an inferior Gump and who wore a Cheetah suit. And their knees pretty much did the same. But my favorite is the Bomber and Minerva version, who was a British archaeologist who came across the tribe in Africa that transformed into a wag cheetah, basically a humanoid cheetah, given her the strength, the speed, the claws, the fangs, and hind sense is an agility of her namesake. And it's not just Justice League and Justice League Limited she's appeared in. She's also appeared in various direct video anime and DC films, making an appearance in the 2009 Wonder Woman anime and film. Appearing in Justice League Doom, being so far the only member of the original Legion of Doom from Super Friends to appear in every animated version of the team. Um. She also appeared among the villains in Superman and Batman Public Enemies looking for the bounty on Superman. And also appeared at the start of Justice League vs. Teen Titans as part of the Legion of Doom again. And in jail. Aim when two were two young heroes in the future are to assist the Justice League. True, true.
true. She was a very evil and a very nasty mess. And she was more yeah. than a nasty cat. And now... Another reason why I prefer Barbara Ann over Priscilla Rick, well, Barbara Minerva over Priscilla Rick, because in Cheetah Queen, <laughs> Dr. Minerva, there is more to the match for Wonder Woman. In fact, she's set to receive her live action and big screen debut in the upcoming Wonder Woman sequel, mm. which is coming out November next year. I just hope they do her perform well. They reveal the actress? I just hope the trailer will give us a good look of what her cheetah form will look like. Great information as usual, my love. And now, next for next villain, and I know her very well. Giovanni was a villain that was from Pokemon. While Giovanni very rarely taken a role as antagonist, his agents often work during his missions due to his cancer, due to his change of power, be through the paranoid of other means. This gives him the unique series of appearance, mainly during the Holden stage, where Meowth often imagined how Pokemon in each episode could be used by him. But sadly, this is just fantasies. But yes, Giovanni was a very cutless, ruth, sorceress, mean, evil villain. The last time he ever met Ash was, well, well, in a lesser Pokemon series. The Pokemon series has gone on way too long. And they should, like, I don't know, just do something. As I was growing up, I heard about the Pokemon musical they did with all the people in costumes. And then it revealed that uh, Giovanni was friends with Ash's mother. I would have loved it if it revealed that he was Ash's father. Everyone loves that idea. But yes, back to him. He was known to be evil, vicious, malicious. He even used Mewtwo to do evil things. And in the end, Mewtwo got out of your claws, you idiot. I never liked him. Never did. The way he treated me, the way he treated me, the trio. I said the trio deserved the work with a better good job. They're good people. They don't deserve the work for that. Idiot Giovanni. Go ahead, love. Giovanni is also being compared to Claw from Inspector Gadget due to, the, due to his relationship with his Persian. That's true. And instead of focusing on what Giovanni could use the Pokemon for, he yeah, actually focused on the power of the Pokemon. You know, how they will make good additions to Giovanni's team. As well as as Mary and the little Pokemon Bagon evolves into Salaman, it's one of the pseudo legendary Pokemon. Ah, uh, yes. Well, the biggest thing they ever did. He was able to meet Ash, but only in a, in the Mewtwo second movie. It's too bad, though. I want to say, want to see them do more battles. They only had a few, only two or one battle with each other. I would love to see how Ash would win against Giovanni. What would you say, love? However. Well, Ash and Giovanni did have a battle in the Best Wishes series. I know. On, and that's the only time this Persian actually participated in the battle, and Persian actually won. Yes. So, I would want to see something more to it. Also, there was a latest episode in, um... Pokemon Sun and Moon episode, I'm not going to do any spoilers, but all I'm going to say is this. In, in episode 87, he's going to appear. But don't know how exactly he's going to appear to. But all I can say is, if you want to watch the episode, fine. Pokemon is still good to you guys. But it's getting old. Sorry, I just mentioned that on the fly, honey. But yes, he was evil. But in most of the Pokemon games that I grew up with, I grew up with the Pokemon Game Boys. In some of the Pokemon games, he had children. He had a son named Red, I do believe. Who was an agent against him, though. And I played most of the Game Boys. Yes, I mean, the game. Giovanni did perform, but he still continues to be evil. I guess the main reason he keeps Jesse James me out for around is because of their success of taking down rival teams from the other regions. Actually, they've been doing that about twice now. But he doesn't know that he doesn't know that that ass is doing it, though. But then again, that's how Team Rocket is. They never ever give the credit to Ash because they don't want they don't want Giovanni to know that they're that that he's they're getting help from Ash to catch him. Hello, boy. Are they gonna this day? He should be about twenty years old by now. That's my thoughts. Actually, Ash should be at least seventeen because he spends at least a year in this region. Thank you, man. So yeah, Giovanni made contact his agents on a computer screen throughout the early seasons of Pokemon. The only you didn't get to see his eyes in oh, his battle with Gary in the Kanto region, where he actually stepped out of the shadows when he brought out Mewtwo. 
<laughs> I wish they did more of them. But as I said in Pokemon Live, as I stated before, he did date Delia. It would have been awesome. But the anime didn't happen. So, if they are going to finish with the uh, Pokemon series one day, I hope they do a, hope they do a big reveal that, I don't know, dum 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 dum. Could she finally be Ash's father? Everyone wants that to know. Everyone wants that to happen, actually. I don't know why. They just do. Well, it's Ash's dad is someone else. Yeah, but who is Ash's father? Oh, sorry. Different topic. Sorry about that. <laughs> Any case, our next top villain is Maleficent, who is my favorite villain of them all. She was an evil, wicked fairy who wasn't invited to the coronation for the princess. So she sent a curse and cursed the dear princess. And the little fairies had to take her to somewhere to hide her. Maleficent was evil, cruel, nasty, and deceitful. And the only one who she can count on is her crow. Not her little dumb raven. raven thank you, dear. I've seen Diablo the Raven. Diablo, thank you. Thank you, honey. Diablo. As we've seen in the Maleficent movie, the one that was made recently, nah, we're not going to talk about her. She's a goody goody. We're going to talk about the Maleficent that we know and love. The animated one. No, she was very evil, very dark. The animation when they animated her, her dress and everything, she looked so scary. She scared me out of my pajamas, which I'm not in pajamas. Don't forget her dragon form. Oh and yes, the dragon form. And all the powers of hell. I can't believe they didn't censor that in the movie. But then again, Disney was Disney. So yes. Maleficent had a dragon form which was magnificently scary. Of all the dragons in Disney, she is the most scariest thing I ever seen on wings. Evil! Evil, evil, evil! She scared me out of my butt brains. I mean, she scared me out of my mind when I was young. The only uh, villains that tend to tend to are cool in my mind. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. But yes, Maleficent. Nasty, cruel, vindictive. Even her own boyfriend, Hades, in the House of Mouse, we see that Hades and Maleficent were in a relationship. So I wonder, what could have happened with those loves? <laughs> Sorry, guys, but I tend to mention some things that subtract my mind. Yeah. I apologize for that. Well, like I say, is this. She did, she did create a daughter, after all, for Disney Descendants. <laughs> but yes. Um, but Disney... Ma when Dis it comes to the... Sorry. Go ahead, honey, go ahead. And don't forget Bianca. Once upon a time, Bianca has a different daughter named Lily. Ah, oh, yes, Matt. I'm. You explain about that, not me. I'm not into Once Upon a Time. I know shocking, right? But, I mean, in the live action series Once Upon a Time, as everyone knows, season four, Lily has a daughter. So it goes by the name Lily. Lily's name in her live action appearances. Lily's giving basically a Mother-like role. But it'll never reveal, so far it hasn't revealed who the fathers of our two separate daughters are. And one thing to note is, when it comes to Disney villains, the villain is usually, will always depict it as the leader. Like in the Kingdom Hearts series. Sure. Speaking of that, she will turn in Kingdom Hearts 3. Yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3. Speaking of that, she will turn in Kingdom Hearts 3. And that would be in 2019. I can't wait for that game. I won't be playing it though, but I'll be watching it like a movie. Like I always do. I mean, come on, how many people can cut the parts and make it into a movie? It's fun that way. <laughs> I hope they I hope they have some Jungle Book characters in it. In any case, Maleficent is one cruel, vindictive person. And if I saw her, I'll be under my bed for months. Our next villain is, of course, Venom! Venom is a nasty copycat of Spider-Man. He's a black spider with a spider, a white spider, and says, kind of like a black widow, only more deadly. And at first, he would capture Peter when he first met. And unfortunately, Peter was used. But then, once he was awakened from what Venom was doing to him, he was free. Until Eddie Brock, one of his former classmates and former best friends, was taken over by him. And as we've seen the newest we made, the newest Venom movie, yeah, yeah. That power is really strong. What do you think, honey? Basically, in the original comic books, Eddie Brock started off as a reporter for the the Daily Bugle's rival, the Daily Globe. Eddie interviewed a fellow who claimed to be the Sin Eater, and told Spider-Man caught the real Sin Eater. 
as a result, and his life started going downhill. Result, and then his dad, who had been mean to him, was shouted, Cease communication with him altogether, and causing a disturb, and causing his wife to leave him. No, I didn't know he was married. Actually, he was. Didn't know that. The race called the Clintar, and was originally bonded to Deadpool before bonding with Spider Man during the Secret Wars event for the comics. It wasn't until later that Spidey found out there was a symbiote due to having been looked at by the Fantastic Four. Spidey removed the symbiote by means of a charge spell. However, the symbiote bonded with Eddie who came to the same charge the symbiote was trapped in and became Venom. In addition to being bigger and stronger than Spider-Man and having his powers, Venom also knows everything about Spidey, thanks to the symbiote sign with him, and can also sneak up on Spidey about 36 cents. Now there are two possibilities for that. The 1990s series, which was Venom's on-screen debut, explains that the abilities the result of the symbiote failing to bond with Peter and a spectacular Spider-Man explain that the abilities were result of the abilities because since the symbiote was once a part of Peter, his sixth sense doesn't consider it a threat. So yeah, since the in the 80s, but it's become so popular that it can basically have yeah, I mean, Spider-Man show. Oh, sin. And has many things to do with the original Spider Man live action films. And as you mentioned, Bianca, he's also received his own solo out in basically showing a universe or timeline where Eddie got this movie on the Peter. That's a whole mouthful, mm -hmm. love. A very whole yeah. mouthful. And of course, Venom has a very iconic look. Like the Joker, he has. What appears to be a permanent smile. Mm, a scary, creepy one, to be more exact. Yeah. And it's also those white eyes. Like, mm. like they give him a similar look to a killer whale, you might say. Yes. Now then. Our next villain well, is... Makes... Oh, sorry, honey. Were you almost done? Sorry. Also makes Venom unique is the way he talks. He says, we instead of I, referring to the host and symbiote. Yep. Even though Venom is a bad guy, he also likes to be an anti hero. In any case, great description of him, honey. Our next villain is Shredder! A very nasty villain. Now, I'm going to talk about the sweater that I grew up with, 2003. That sweater was a nasty. He was just, he was like, he was a little alien in a humongous samurai giant, in a samurai robot. And at first, in the first episode, he first appeared, he appears as a good guy trying to make friends with Leonardo. But in the end, Leonardo saw the truth in him, and then he and his brothers and his master began to battle him. In some parts, Shredder was just a nasty guy. He just wanted revenge. He wanted to conquer the world, conquer New York. He had control of everything. He even used his daughter, Karai, his adopted daughter. But then... Somehow in the future, Karai ended up more good than he is. But yes, Shredder was the most nastiest villain from 2003 series. He scared me on my. He was a very nasty villain. Now the Shredder from the uh, old one. <laughs> that's Jaco's department, not mine. I grew up in yeah, this. Basically, I became interested in Shredder since I was watching the appearance in the 80s, which is basically something you might say. Not even more lighthearted as a character. Basically, Shredder's on screen appearances make up for his lack of appearances in the comics. And that's what the American series was based on. Basically, yes. Shredder will come out to Yoshi, Splinter's owner. And he's simply coming in recent years to the appearances on, on the big and small screen. Become the turtle's most popular villain. Most Even dangerous. Side, but Most dangerous villain indeed, as I would say. 
to the point that yes. he became a demon in one, yeah. then a virus, computer virus in another, and became so much evil. There's at one point so many swears that got me scared out of my mind. One that scared me the most was mm -hmm. the demon one, though. The yeah. ooh, that one creeped me out. Yeah. If anyone saw that, that was the lost series of the Ninja Turtle, the darker one that had more darker into it. Yeah. The version of Shredder over the years has been fixed, being a lot more ruthless than the previous. Especially the one in 2000. Uh, oh, sorry, go on, honey. The version of 2000. The Korean 2012 series. Ah, uh, yes. 2012. And in the new live action movies, in the first one that came out in 2014. <coughs> Wait, they suck! <laughs> With a whole bunch of blades he can throw the turtle and then return to with armor via magnets. Hmm. Yes, he was so, yeah. very. Twitter is also for a skilled fighter in hand to hand combat and the criminal mastermind. That's true. But even in one moment, there was one moment of humanity within him in 2012. This will be the last thing we talk about. When he came back as a demon, he saw that Kurai and the turtles were trying to stop him from being, from being a demon. In the end, he killed himself to let them live. That was one humanic moment for him because in the, fifth, in the 2012 series, Shredder had more love and more compassion for his adopted daughter, even when she was turned to a monster because of his mistakes. He wanted to cure Kurai. So yeah, that was one thing about the 2012 series, that he had a com more compassion for Kurai than the one in 2003. In 2003, he was a monster. In 2012, he had more compassion for Kurai, and I admired that, because I had that type of my dad. I mean, come on, anyone would. I know, very touching. From her original parents, Amati Yoshi, in Tang Shin. In any case, our next villain is Megatron. The Megatron I will talk about is, well, I'm, I'm, I'm actually planning to do a few of these reviews of myself with all of you, a few of these villains, so I'm just gonna let Jake go take this, take the time, because I'm gonna save my thoughts for Megatron for my, for my, for my list, because most of the villains he chose for his list are most of the ones that I've chose for my list. So I gotta keep my limit short. That's why my limit was very short when it comes to a few of these. You may go on, Jake. Talk about Megatron. Like Shredder, Megatron himself has received various incarnations, with each one appearing more intimidating and more dangerous than the previous. The original Megatron from the original Transformers G1 theory was voiced by Frank Walker, and then he was transformed into a gun. The recent and modern depictions of the original Megatron given him a tank, score a gem mode. Megatron is the ruthless, cunning, and merciless leader of the Decepticon, and doesn't tolerate traitors like Starscream. Mm, that's true. That is very true, love. He was a very humongous creep. He didn't trust anybody. He only trusted himself. He didn't believe anyone. It's just nasty. Of all the series, I would say, oops, I forgot not to talk about it. <laughs> Alright, you can continue. The next incarnation of Megatron was the Beast Wars era Megatron. The first oh. version of Megatron to have a beast mode, namely a T Rex. Then a dragon later on. Mm. Yep. Next, in the 2001 Robots in the Skies Megatron, the first multi changer version of Megatron. The transformed into which went a dragon, a bat, yep. a flowing yep. hand, a yep. heart, and a jet. Yep, basically. And another trait that's common with Megatron is his rebirth as Galvatron. Oh, we've seen that so many times. It's not even Bunny. Get not even Bunny. <laughs> the 2001 Robots of the Sky Megatron stars the trend of Galvatron, seemingly being a Greek colored version of Megatron. And then you've got the Unicron Trilogy Megatron, who started off transforming into a tank, an armada, an Energon transformed into a jet. And gain the jet and car mode in Cybertron. Mm -hmm. And then you have the live action version of Megatron. 
So basically, in the first few films, was the me. Appeared to be the most intimidating of all the Megatrons. And then you had Transformers animated, George. The first modern version of Megatron began to read as item of the original Megatron's look. This time transforming into a twin rotor helicopter. And then you have Transformers Prime, where Frank Walker was the voice for Megatron. And recently, we have Transformers Cyberbird, where he again transforms into a tank. In addition to Frank Walker, David K. provided the voices for the Beast Era and Judicon Trilogy Megatrons. And Corey Burton voiced in the Transformers anime version of the character. Megatron's most well-known weapons are his fusion cannon, which is usually located on his right arm, his flail, and of course, recent versions of the character have also given him a sword. That's a lot of, that's a lot of information, love. Very informative, as usual. No, honey, I may have to stop for a minute because it's gonna, and I have to add, and I have to add some more okay. into it. We'll be right back, folks. And we're back, folks. So our next here, our next villain is Cell from Dragon Ball Z. He was the most evil, despicable villain. He could absorb you through his tail, and you could be sucked into his butt and digested. Ew. You may go, honey. Basically, Cell was the final creation of the scientist Dr. Shiro, who won revenge on Goku for defeating the Red Ribbon Army. That's true. Cell was recently made from the divine DNA of Goku, Vegeta. Piccolo, yep. he's in his father King Kong. Yep. This is mainly in the manga. Yep. On the anime, I mentioned. He's that the Now, also, by the name of Gohan, Willen, Tien, and others. So, most likely, most likely including Rad, Goku's brother. He was also a villain of very <laughs> evil intent and possessions, designed possibly of all the abilities of the greatest fighters to have inhabited in Earth. Which sure it was a perfect war, possessed by numbers of favorite generosity as traits as Jake was particularly. And he was one nasty villain. He was the perfect cell. But then again, he was one nasty but intelligent villain. I would say that he had better intelligence than Goku. Ever. Basically, like, we basically have Goku and Vegeta are Remains and even his Piccolo's cunning as well. And like the scenes, he has a love for bad well, and grows strong after recovering from the death, as well as possessing Vegeta's temper and Goku's laid back personality. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen the notice that. Also, this was a thing that he said once to Piccolo. I'm going to absorb you, perfect out of the Piccolo. I'm your brother, the yeah. monster with Goku's energy. <laughs> Which was kind of fetal. And also, his first appearance was kind of creepy. The second appearance, eh. But then the next part, he just, oh my god, he has a human face. What's wrong with that? A human face? Oh my god. Yeah. I think that's mostly due to Goku and Vegeta. Yes. Also, if you want to know his appearance, that's mostly due to Freeze's DNA. Really? Didn't know that. Yeah. Because Freeze's race has something that's called Fire there was even a time when they did Future Trunk Saga, and they did a lot of ideas with him, bringing him back and all that. And even some, and even in the Dragon Ball GT, he was he even tried to absorb Goku, but could. In the end, Piccolo saved him. So yeah, so was just a nasty piece of work. He was created for death, created to absorb. Him. Created to kill and destroy anyone around him. Even kids. That is true. And if you. He, also, he appeared in other video games as well. I was getting to that, honey. I was getting to that. He had many appearances in trend in a lot of video games. But also, more to the point, he mostly also showed up in, com in, in comic books. 
Oh, so he appeared in comic books some of the time. He even had a fusion. This fusion is like, well, trust me, if you saw this picture of his ultimate fusion, he would be known as the Golden Great Ape. So, yeah. He had other fusions, too, like Cellzilla, Perfect 16, Cell 17, or Cell or Veggie Cell. But those are just other names. We have a long list. He's in a lot of games, and there are tons of video games that he was ever in. And manga comics, mostly. But mostly the anime. Welcome to the Dragon Ball Blitz. How long is Prisa? Definitely my favorite. I prefer Dragon Ball Blitz any day. True. Uh, in any case. In addition, all of the abilities of the warriors that make up his body, such as Big Special Bean Cannon, Doku's Kamehameha, Freeze's Death Bean, and Vegeta's That's true. And he has a lazy side to it, like Goku, as you mentioned earlier. Yep. He is just one kind of guy you just want to fight. Before, but. Don't forget, sorry. Don't forget his reproductive ability. Integrate the Soul Juniors. There. And, but also, when they, when he was teaming up with, with, with Frieza, those two work like a double evil agent. Really nasty graphic yeah. groups. <laughs> That's what Most I want to say. Frieza being a part of Cell. Oh yeah. yeah, I say they were distant cousins by my imagination, by my calculations anyway. Mm. In any case, that's all our thoughts. Our next talk about our dum 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 honorable mentions. And the first one is Long John Silver from the Legend of Treasure Island. You do not know about this cartoon. This cartoon was made back in the nineties. They were all they're all animals instead of like you know like Robin Hood, the Disney movie. But instead of a instead of a good fox, he's an evil fox. And of course he has his has his leader with him, Pew, although he's not on the list. He is known to be a bit more different. I've seen Long John Silver, most of the pirate movies I've grown up with, he was known as a very good guy. I mean he had a soft spot for Jim. But in this one, he was Basically, evil, rocking the core. Anti hero. Anti hero, yes, correct, yeah. Mundo. At more points in the show, he would always try to work together with Jim. And in the end, he would try to get Jim to join him in one episode. Which I didn't want that to happen because Jim is too good of a nice guy. He's a boy. Too much of a nice hmm. guy. And Silver, oh God. He tried to make a deal with the devil so he can bring a good soul into hell. Excuse the language. I can tell you this much. He deserves to be in there. He's evil. Like any other villain. Oh, he, yeah. Well, most of the time, Sora is still looking for the treasure in the seconds. Isn't all just causing trouble? It is very rare for him to simply focus on his deal and try and send him to the underworld. Indeed. And well, the originals. Story of Treasure Island by Robert Logan Stevenson depicted him as an anti hero. Yep. This version had been more of a villain. Yep. And the fox actually suit. Because Sue is definitely a sly character. I would say so, yes. If I put him and with Robin Hood in the same room, Robin Hood would win and Alan in a good way. Our next villain to be honorable mention is Skeletor, and I know that Jaco knows more about Skeletor than I do. So. Go on, honey. Basically, Skeletor is the main villain of the He-Man series. It's basically, He-Man's arch enemy. He's basically a blue-skinned man with a skull head. The 2003 series basically gives us a backstory on that. He was originally a man named Kandor who ended up getting some ass spilled on his face. So he tried to revile that, that Randor, He-Man's father. He was saved by the Hordak in that show. Basically, similar to how Unicron in Trans OSG 1 saved Megatron by reviving him as Galvatron. Yes. Go on. Yeah. Skeletor mainly relies on his magic and his henchmen to try and acquire the power of Grey Skull. Mm. The castle. And T Man constantly protects. In addition, Skeletor, while not being as strong as He Man, 
has his wits, usually relying on various trickery in order to get rid of He-Man, such as making the hero think he actually killed a person. That is true. And now for Mama, the Ever Living! Mama was a monster that wanted to destroy all universes and take control, but lying on the game stopped him every chance. And all the Thundercats series, well, you know what I mean. The third one kind of, I'm talking about the one from the first one. The one that was done by the same people who did, like, um, Rudolph Red and Reindeer, Snow White 7, Do I mean, Frost and Snowman. Rankin Bass did their first on the, um, the Thundercats, and they made him evil. He looks like an old man, but then wham, he turns into a mummy monster, and he can unleash his power on you. Basically, relationship with the mutants is also similar to the Unicron and Galvatron. Mm, Basically, yep. he's this powerful villain who forces not least less powerful villains to work for him. Such as when he sank the mutants' mother ship into the sand when they first met. True, loop, loop, true, true. He was one nasty mummy, I could tell you that much. He could wrap you up in his wraps and you could die forever. And the way he gained that power, Mama, the ever living! I swear, with all yes, those stats. he had to fight the Thundercats himself. But he true. easily frightened by his own reflection. <laughs> That's scary. That's funny. Funny. <laughs> Our next. Basically. Story. His reflection showed him his true self, which scared him. That was wit. And what was his true and form? He away from his it? sarcophagus for long. What was his true form again? Was it human? I think he started off human. I can't remember if they actually revealed his mother's backstory. I'll check on that later, honey. In any case, my next one is Aku. And believe me, this guy scared the loving hell out of me. He was a demon, a force for evil against the forces of good. But when he got, but when he got to the well, the last in the samurai jack, he turned to a big pussy. Excuse language, as in a Brady cat, as I would say. Not surprising, considering Jack wields the one thing that can hurt him, a sword made from the. Your energy of Jack's father, as from the season 3 2 potter that explains Aku's origins, being the last remnant of a dark entity that was around since time began, and ended up gaining its true form due to Jack's father trying to destroy the is left behind when that piece fell to Earth during the time of the dinosaurs. That's true. That's true indeed. And yeah, he has one nasty bloke. And our so yeah, okay. Go ahead. A couple's main ability he is magic. He can shape shift, shoot energy beams from his eye, and he can corrupt others. No, no. Case our next villain and our last unmentionable villain is someone that I don't know personally. So Jago, you may go. The last one we'll mention. Is Tyranor. Many of you probably don't know him, but if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you'd know him. He's basically this big brown Tyrannosaur Rex and main villain of the Hunter Barbera show, Dink the Little Dinosaur. Tyrannor, more like main carnivores in the show, also like land before time doesn't talk, but his vocals are provided by Frank Woke. Tyrannor basically hunts the other dinosaurs, with Dink and his friends being popular target. Tyrannus was basically quite the menace. 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 Not just thinking his friend, but also to their home, Green Meadow. One time when he was running too close to the meadow, Dink and his friends tried to trap him in a swamp called the Land of No Return. Only to end up saving Tyrannus when he got stuck in a lane covered by moss and vines to make it look like a meadow. Which is pretty clever, I would say. 
Anyway, folks, I hope you enjoyed our top 10 cartoon villains. This is White Rose signing out, and... Jacob Blue Soon. See you guys next time. I hope you guys have a magnificent dark evening. <laughs> and let's go, and bye. Okay, my brony watchers, remember to subscribe to my channel. And remember, there's always more with me than meets the eye. Or, should I say, more than meets a white rose. Night, folks. Hee <laughs> hee